afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of Cult Classic Movies. I'm delighted today to be joined by the one and only Kevin J. O'Connor. As we look back, as we go back into the vault this week, we travel back uh, 21 years uh, to be precise and we look back and what is uh, real sort of an ancient, uh, ancient civilization as such, the one and only ancient Egypt and one of the most iconic movies ever to resemble ancient Egypt that uh, came out 21 years ago today it hit our movie screens. It was The Mummy uh, featuring Brendan Fraser, featuring um, uh, Rachel Weisz, uh, Ode Ferrer, uh, featuring Arnold Bosdaloo, and our guest this evening, the one and only Kevin J. O'Connor, who played the role of Benny Gabor. Um, Kevin, uh, 21 years ago since the, the Mummy came out, so, uh, does it almost feel like a distant memory now at this stage? No, it doesn't seem that long ago. Um, it's shocking. Last year was its 20th anniversary, and we did a, there was a, a, a piece, an uh, entertainment weekly about, the, about it being 20 years old, and I couldn't believe that then. It seems maybe half of that for some reason. And uh, Kevin, in terms of getting your role as Benny Gabor in The Mummy, uh, I was speaking to pa Patricia Vasquez uh, and she told me how she landed the role of um, an extra Ramon was uh, pretty much by luck and fate, really. Uh, an opportunity came her way. She was trying to open up one or two uh, hurdles or doors that were closed in her way and she got a lucky break and she knew a director and that got her that role. For you or yourself, Benny, did you, uh, for Kevin, did you go through an audition, a uh, vigorous audition process to land the role of Benny Gabor? No, I didn't. Um, luckily, I had worked with Steve Summers, the director, uh, a couple of years before on a movie called Deep Rising, yeah. and uh, which is sort of, I guess, a cult film now, sort of a, sort of a horror comedy. And... Um, uh, action film with Treat Williams and Famke Jensen and Wes Studi and some others, uh, Jason Fleming and uh, Trevor Goddard and some other people, Anthony Hill. And I did that film in uh, Vancouver. And that film uh, is looked on probably more fondly now than it was then. It didn't do very well. It was up against a tiny little independent film called Titanic. And um, it just wiped everything out, Titanic, um, just cleared the way at the theaters. Um, so that I'd already worked with Steve and we had a good working relationship. And um, he had told me he had written a part, not specifically for me, but he wanted the both of us to sort of change what he had written to, to uh, fit me in, um, in uh, sort of a collaborative effort on the uh, character because I think it was written as a sort of a short chubby Frenchman and that is not quite me. And uh, in, in terms of uh, Kevin, we know the most of the production was done in, in terms of the UK. So when you signed on for uh, The Mummy, were you aware of who were the fellow cast members at first? Were you aware Brendan Fraser was involved? Were you aware that Rachel Weisz uh, was involved? Or was it a case of arriving on in, in the UK soil and being made aware of uh, who was on project with you? Oddly enough, I had just worked with John Hanna and we got along really well. And just a few years before, I had a scene in a film called Gods and Monsters or a couple scenes, I can't remember, with Brendan Fraser. So uh, I knew both of them and I knew Brendan was in the film. And I think at the time I was about to get, um, de you know, cast as a definite thing. I think John Hanna was going through the same thing at the same time. So we discussed it, John and I. Okay, and uh, Kevin, in terms of uh the mummy it sort of itself. Uh, when you sort of saw the script for your character, uh, Benny, what was your sort of first impressions and what sort of sprung to your mind in terms of how you wanted to portray him? Well, I, I don't remember every detail of that now, but um, 
I definitely saw him as a total opportunist and um, someone that possibly thought he was a little smarter than he actually was. And, um, and then I physically started to think about what he could look like. And this, I can't remember his name. He was a, he's a great uh, costume, costumer. He designed them, I can't remember his name. Um, and he's great. And his, his take was different than mine. And it was one of the only times I really had to come up and tell him uh, with, with Steve, the director, that I didn't think that fit what I was doing. It was a little more rugged. And I wanted Benny to look almost like this, uh, you know, skinny, skinny sort of bird, like a, like, a, like a buzzard or a vulture walking around the desert with these, uh, these pants that don't quite fit him. They hike up a little high and, you know, uh, and even the mustache was sort of a 20s thing of him trying to look a little more, um, uh, a little bit more like a swashbuckler than he really was. But uh, so it was all these little bits and pieces I remember sort of coming up with, with I, Steve. And I suppose, uh, Kevin, one of the scenes really that caught my eye and in terms of the mummy itself and in terms of the real horror and that sense of real graphical feel was a scene where you're there with a motif and uh, you're sitting, uh, a motif is sitting down and uh, one of the persons who's opened the box says, you just lost your eyes and uh, you're sitting in the room with the bandages across your eyes, he's petrified and you're just so about to tell him what's going to happen to him. And uh, it's, it's very the sense of just, just the room, it's just a chair and a blindfold, but you get this real, you get this real sense of, of horror, this real sense of scaredom as well, and you sort of sign in his debt warrant there and then. Yes, that, that is a, that's funny you bring that up, because that's a scene that possibly could be my favorite scene from that movie, for, for me, and uh, Tuck. Uh, Watkins who played the the uh, American um, because it was sort of really a throwback to sort of a 30s classic horror horror movie you know like a Peter Lorre or a or a Boris Karloff or um, you know Bela Lugosi type scene you know it, 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 it was a very uh, straight ahead horror um, sort of an evil uh, 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 sadistic scene. I mean, there was no, no, no violence in the scene, but it was just sort of a, a, a creepy scene. I really liked that scene. And I suppose, uh, Kevin, um, you mentioned about Benny being an opportunist, but he was a survivalist as well in terms of he knew how to uh, survive uh, the more sort of treacherous uh, situation uh, in terms of uh, making uh, alliances just to uh, basically just to survive on the in the out sort of scenario and I suppose um, there was many sort of uh, scenes uh, throughout uh, the mummy that probably uh, were really sort of gripping sort of uh, action sort of scenes and in terms of production was it very much uh, hard really to get them on the first one or two shots was there many sort of scenes that require multiple shooting? Um, you mean was there Many takes for each scene. For, yeah, was there, a good, was there a good few sort of uh, takes in terms of the action scenes that you were involved in? Um, I, think he, I think your dog just answered it. Yes, yes. No, we did, we did, um, we did several I'm, I'm trying to remember, you know, different scenes took different, uh, the, the, um, the scene with the, um, with the uh, religious medallions is another one people seem to bring up uh, to me, um, where I keep changing my, uh, my religions and my, my, uh, my uh, languages to see which one hits home with the mummy as he's coming towards me. Um, we did that in one, mostly in one take. And then there was a bit, because there was some special effects in there that we had to uh, adjust for those. 
But I think we did that in one sort of long take where I'm walking backwards doing that with nothing in front of me, obviously. And um, we, you know, uh, we did that one for a whole afternoon, I remember. So because we really, I really wanted to get it right. I really did. I really worked on that scene. And um, um, and other scenes, it's like anything else. Some things are just easy. They go, they go quickly. And other things, because of my performance isn't working in the scene or uh, the effects aren't or, the, or some sort of production um, uh, part of whatever isn't working. So you have to do uh, many takes. And sometimes you're, it's a breeze and you do one or two takes or three takes and that's it. Did that answer your question? Uh, in Kevin, in terms of working alongside Arnold Bolosco, uh, you have real sort of good sort of uh, chemistry uh, between the two of you in terms of your sort of interaction. I almost felt like a sort of a teacher sort of cute sort of relationship that was going on between Oh, what kind of a relationship did you compare it to? A sort of a, a line, a sort of a teacher, sort of a student. Uh, you were sort uh -huh. of... You, almost like a teacher and you were almost like in his class you obeyed by everything he said uh, in terms of uh, you you respected he you're afraid of him but at the same time you respected his authority right um that's a good that's a good way to describe it a teacher and student of a uh, of a very creepy school right um but i what i took it is also because i'm a big uh, movie fan o older movies um, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I love old films. And um, in my head, I think I wanted that sort of classic relationship between the main monster, which is Arnold um, Vaslu, the mummy, and the main henchman, which would be me. And um, so I think that, uh, and also him being my boss, in fact, in a nutshell, I'll tell you, we at, there was a scene I only, there was a line I only did once. And I don't know if you remember, after we're in the desert and the mummy, uh, we've got uh, Rachel Weiss uh, kidnapped and the mummy creates the big wave thing with the face in it in the sand. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I think I called or some, somebody call because I wanted to know what it looked like what the sand wave I, we didn't know what it looked like because obviously it hadn't really been made yet so they told us and they told me it was a big wave with the face and so on one take I just added ad-libbed a line about how great the the sand wall was I can't remember the exact line really beautiful I tell them oh it's beautiful so it's constantly kissing up to my boss you know and it was in the movie. I was in shock that they had left that in the movie. But um, uh, I think that's Benny's relationship with the mummy. As long as he can stay alive, as long as he gets a little bit out of it, he'll um, continually kiss the, uh, you know, kiss up to the mummy. And I suppose, uh, Kevin, in terms of your sort of character's demise, uh right at the end of the sort of movie. It was an almost feeling like the whole world lights went out, that scenario on Benny, uh, in terms of that, all you could see was uh, a sudden, the terror on his face and the darkness, and then uh, an odd sort of scream and then fade away. It was almost like, uh, uh, in terms of Benny, and, uh, in terms of that, that he knew his time was up and this was a scenario that, there was no escaping from. Right, yeah. I mean, it really helped me as an actor to have all those things happen in front of me, except for the scarabs. But, um, you know, to have a torch and there was, uh, and, and to have some of the, the, the things getting crushed, which I believe I was around, but I was in that room and they, they turned the lights down as my, I had a, some sort of wire wiring to my torch. So they were able to put the flame out. So I was in the dark and I could see it slowly going and then I would look down and see the bug. So all that was really uh, 
it helped me as an actor. Um, so much of it was there, except for the scarabs, obviously. But um, I think they even used light to show me where they were going to be as I was doing that. And then the light became smaller and smaller around me. So that was really good. It really helped me. Um, uh, not only with my eye lines to the, the effects, but just helped me uh, for Benny to uh, be absolutely petrified and know this is probably the end of the rope. And I suppose in terms of uh, Benny's sort of demise, uh, sadly for him, in terms of he meant he sort of maker that movie, it obviously meant there would be no revival for him in terms of uh, the, the Mummy Returns. And uh, in terms of you've obviously been involved in the Mummy, what did you or your own personal opinion of uh, the, the sequel? Were you happy with where it left off in terms of the original? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I like the sequel. Um, I do, and um, uh, maybe I like the first one a little bit more, only because um, I usually like the first films of most things a little bit more, but I like the sequel. Um, um, there's some great, great set pieces in that. Um, but oddly enough, you bring that up, Steve had talked to me briefly that he made, there was a chance of bringing Benny back into the return that when Patricia uh, uh, Angsunaman raises the mummies from the dead, that the last one to pop up was a sort of um, discombobulated Benny. And I was going to be part of the group of bad guys, but having a nose melted off or my no ears or whatever it was, um, not with all my parts, you know, and I thought that was a really great idea, but it just, uh, there was so much jammed into the movie. I don't think they, uh, Steve eventually decided against that. And uh, finally, Kevin, working on the set of uh, The Mummy back in 1999, was it one of your highlights in terms of your career today in terms of the whole product? And obviously speaking to Patricia, she was blown away when she saw the final product when it was released uh, in the cinema. Were you the same in terms of the special effects for, when it was all added in? Were you taken back in the sheer scale of what it turned out to be? And obviously, it was one of the films of, of the decade and of its era, especially in 1999. It was probably one of the biggest blockbusters. Yeah. Um, to, to be honest, I remember seeing it at, um, at the premiere at Universal Studios. And I, I have to tell you, James, I'm just too nervous of a person. I, I can't relax um, and just enjoy it. So I, to be honest, it was maybe 10 years later that I saw it again. And I really enjoyed it probably more than I ever did uh, initially. And I was able to look at myself and not cringe and, you know, um, and I thought it was, I thought it was really good. Uh, but that, that's the way I am. Sometimes I need time to look at those things, but I'm very happy I did it. And I love being on the set. Brendan Fraser, Rachel were absolutely great. And John Hanna and Arnold, um, and especially Steve Summers, especially Steve and uh, great British crew we had. Excellent. I mean, really excellent. Uh, on that note, uh, Kevin J. O'Connor, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memory playing uh, Vinnie Gabor in the, uh, this week's cult classic movie as we leap back to or 21 years into the vault, back, uh, to, back to 1999. Ancient Egypt was the theme. The cult classic this, move, this week was The Mummy. Uh, Kevin J. O'Connor, thanks for sharing your memories of playing Vinnie Gabor. Uh, in the mummy, uh, really a historic sort of role for you, and in terms of the mummy sort of franchise that has still a real cult following 20 years on. And uh, Benny, we wish you a prosperous, happy uh, Christmas and a new year, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors in 2021. Th thank you, James. And I want to give a shout out to my Irish cousins there, Annette and Maureen and Mark and Fanula. Um, I love Ireland. Uh, Kevin, pleasure and take care. Uh, great talking to you, James. Good job.
Many men have wasted their lives in the foolish pursuit of Harmonoptera. Most have never returned. <laughs>